to continue our cleanup work now by switching to the quads tool and in the toolbar I'll choose the direct selection method I can click the initial edge and then the receiving edge so that's just two clicks one and two so I like this tool it allows you to see a highlight of where it thinks you want uh, to connect up and if you like what it's showing you you just click it so that's really just two clicks one two to move around the model for you to see it a little bit better. Okay, it looks pretty good around the front side. So I'm going to go to the back here and fix this, uh, these two triangles by using the Move Versus tool. And all I have to do is just grab that one verse, move it over the other, and it will weld it when I see that red dot. I'm going to try and redirect some of this geometry here. So I'm going to use the Add or Split tool. It's much like the Cut tool in 3ds Max. You have to click on one edge at a time and connect it up. So I can just delete those extra edges. So now I'm going to use the brush tool and speed up the playback uh, for a few minutes. Just using the move vertices tool to tweak the geometry a little bit. Sometimes having to weld a few vertices. I'm going to use the split rings tool to add some extra loops here on the tongue. The only problem is I didn't have enough supporting geometry on the back and created a little bit of a snapping error there, but that's no problem. I just use the uh, move vertices oftentimes, but in this case, uh, it's a little bit more problematic, so we'll just use the select tool, select the vertices, and then the transform tool uh, to move it into place. And sometimes you may elect to actually turn auto snapping off at the top of the UI uh, while you fix uh, some snapping errors. I find that some areas where you have a lot of geometry very close or maybe right on the edge of an open part of your mesh, uh, you want to be very careful. So oftentimes what I'll do is uh, smooth without auto snapping on and that will help fix a lot of uh, snapping errors. Okay, so once again using split rings to add some extra loops. I uh, hate to piddle with uh, polygons, but uh, sometimes it's just unavoidable. I'll try and tidy up here just a bit. Using the select tool again, we switch to vertices, and I'm just going to select an area that I want to relax. I don't want to relax the entire mesh, and sometimes using the brush tool with the uh, shift key held down to smooth uh, doesn't really give you what you want. So, in this way, I can be a little bit more specific. And I really like using this move vertices with the auto mode. So 
So I'm just select on the element that I want to manipulate. And it just switches me on the fly. All right, now that I've gone in and tweaked the position of the vertices just a little bit to try and clean this up, I'm ready now to fill in the shoe here. In this case, the plan was just to use this along with another model, a football player. So uh, that's why I didn't spend a lot of time trying to create the inner portion. So let's go ahead and just fill this in a little bit. I could use the strokes tool again, or I could select all the edges here and just extrude them. Let's go ahead and try that. So let's choose edges mode. I'll just go ahead and select an edge. Let me hit escape. Let me use a bracket key to reduce my brush size so I'm not accidentally selecting extra edges here. So I'll just select that edge and at the bottom of the tool panel here you can see that you have the ability to select an edge loop, edge ring, or select sharp and so on. In this case, I'll just hit the hotkey that I have assigned for Edge Loop. I assign it to Alt-L, just like it is in 3ds Max. I also assigned the Transform tool to a hotkey as well. In Photoshop, the hotkey for Transform is V. Okay. Bring it on down. Here. I'm going to hit escape and undo and what I want to do first is reinforce this so that it's not pulling from the outside I want to make sure I have uh, some vertices or some edges here kind of supporting this as I make an extrusion so let's split rings I'm going to do it one more time here at the top Okay, so I'd like to select. I'll hit my hotkeys for edges. Select that edge. Oops. Okay, Alt L to select the loop and my V key for transform. Now it holds a little bit better. I'll hit the escape key to drop the transform tool. Split rings. Add another reinforcing loop here. One in the middle. Grab another one there. I'll undo. Go up to the brush tool here. Hold the shift key to smooth. It just looked like the geometry was getting a little bit wonky there, so I'll try to smooth it a bit. So as I'm smoothing, it should be snapping as well. I can just lightly tap the area. Okay. Just so like to select. Use my bracket keys to reduce the burst size. Select the loop. Alt L, the hotkey for edge loop selection. V for transform. And I scale it all in. I'll hit escape to drop that. Actually, let me undo. And I'll switch to vertices and I can relax that selection. Two split rings. I'll go to the brush tool here. And it will not only smooth the geometry, but it'll also help scale it in.
I don't necessarily need this geometry for my intended purpose, which is on a character, but if I wanted to use it perhaps as a product shot or just a, a demo reel piece, then I may want to have enough geometry so it's not so apparent that the inside of the shoe isn't modeled. So if I'm fairly happy with that, now I can go to the cap tool. If I want this to be an ingon, then I could hold the control key and click, but in this case I'll just click once, and so the raw tries, but that's fine. So I'm going to leave the bottom of the shoe hollow like that because we're going to retopo the sole here shortly. So the next thing I probably would want to do is start going in with all the eyelets here and subdivide the polygon that covers it and also do it for areas like the tongue and these recessed portions of this model, like right here, here where all the nylon is and so on. Before I do that though, I may want to just keep this mesh just as it is in its original state to reuse it later on another uh, shoe model if I want. You can just tweak it a little bit if I need. This models palette is actually the one that you'll see in the voxel room. You actually have another one that's dedicated just for the retopo room. You could use either one if you so choose, but the, the one for the models palette in the voxel room, not all of them are quad geometry. You may have some others that are extremely heavy meshes uh, created inside the voxel room. That's the reason why you have this retopo models palette that you can use if you like. So I could create a new folder, name it Cleats. And now come over to the Retopo Layer Groups panel. Make sure to select the layer that I want to store. Come to the right side of the layer. When I see that little move icon, I can now click and drag right into this palette. And you see 3D Coat created a thumbnail for me. So with that done, now let's go in and start subdividing some of these areas. Let's go back to my Select tool. Reduce my brush size with my bracket keys. Choose Faces and I can just paint select these areas and you have a couple different tools here normal extrude and free extrude let's try free extrude and it's fairly close to being centered but what you can do is choose main axis and so now it's oriented along the average of the normals for the selection I can now just go to the center of this gizmo and scale it uniformly and let's scale it along this axis a little bit and hit escape and so that's essentially the same thing as using inset in 3ds max or extrude in maya okay so we'll do the same thing here select the faces re-extrude scale it in hit escape and just keep doing this Escape. And what I may do is assign free extrude a hot key if I'm going to be using this over and over. Just keep in mind if your key is assigned to something that's very common, like the E panel, uh, you, you might want to add a modifier key to it, like Shift E or something like that. In this case, let's say free extrude. Let's hover over that. Hit the end key on your keyboard. And now let's try Shift E. And so we're going to scale that in. Escape. I'm just going to paint select all these polygons as well. And you don't have to hold the shift key with this tool, it's additive by default. Okay, so I'll hit my hot key for the free extrude. Just choose two main axis. I'm going to move it just a bit. So we'll go ahead and bring this video to a close and pick up it in the next one. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.